Hey guys, it's Tina and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to show you how I created this 90s grunge makeup look. Um, here's a little something you probably don't know about me. I'm totally obsessed with the 90s, everything that has to do with the 90s. I'm a little bit biased because I was born in the 90s, but I always say that I was born in the wrong century though because I feel like if I was born in the 80s, like in the early 80s, that would be really cool if I was like a kid in the 80s and then if I was my age right now in the 90s. I love everything about the 90s. I love the TV shows, the style, the music. I listen to 90s music every day in my car. But I figured that I don't have any 90s makeup looks on my channel, I think. So I thought I'm going to create a 90s makeup tutorial for you guys. And this look is pretty easy and um, pretty simple because it, I don't even wear foundation. So I don't have it, even have foundation on. So if you change the lip color, this look is pretty simple for every day. So um, yeah, if you want to see how I created this look, then just keep on watching. I feel like something's wrong with the lighting. Anyway, I'm not going to apply foundation today, so I'm just going to prime my nose, which is uh, a little bit weird, but I am going to apply foundation only to my nose because I feel that my nose is a little bit more red than the rest of my face. So I'm going to take the Makeup Forever Step 1 Skin Equalizer, and this is the smoothing one. And I'm going to apply just a little bit on my nose and a little bit on the sides of my nose as well. And then I'm going to take this thing which I have from a benefit kit. I'm not sure if they sell it individually. It's called the what's it called? Dr. Feel Good. I don't know. It's like a pot with wait, let me open this. Okay, got it. So it's like a pot, it has a little sponge which I'm going to use, and it has a little kind of a wax and um in it. And they say that you can use it on your face before makeup, after makeup, to a little bit like retouching things or without makeup, just all over your face to smooth out the skin and it has a really nice lemon scent so I'm going to apply that to my forehead and my chin because I'm not going to apply foundation there but I just want to kind of even out the skin tone and it really smooths out everything and make it look um, a little bit just smoother so I'm going to apply that then I'm going to um, apply a little bit of um, concealer under my eyes. This is the Garnier BB Cream Under Eye Roller. And I'm going to apply that under my eyes. And you guys know if you watch my videos a lot that I like to let this specific concealer sit for a second because it just um, kind of dries out a little bit and sets a little better if I let it sit for a minute before I blend it out. So while I'm blending it out, I'm going to apply some foundation only to my nose as I mentioned before. I'm going to use the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow uh, not concealer, foundation. And I'm in shade, this is the lightest one that I have, 202 um, Creamy Natural. Which is the lightest one because I'm not 10 yet. But it is spring! How about that? Let's talk about it. It's spring, it's um, March 3rd when I'm, uh, I'm going to apply it with my finger. Uh, it's March 3rd when I'm filming this, which is cool, I'm so excited for spring to come and for the weather to get warmer. I'm tired of winter already, of all the cold and the rain and the sweaters. I uh, just want to wear like a little dress and some gladiator boots and sandals and go out. Anyway, I'm applying that with my finger, I'm just dabbing it on top, not using like a beauty blender or a sponge or anything like that, just want to keep it really simple. And then I'm going to apply some spot concealer, I'm using the MAC um, Studio Finish Concealer, I'm in shade NW20 I believe, yeah, no, NC20, and I'm going to use my finger as well to apply that. You can see that I use my fingers a lot today, I obviously washed my hands beforehand, um, I just want everything to be pretty simple. I don't want to use like a ton of brushes or anything like that. Just something really simple. So I'm applying this concealer to spots where um, I have like redness or blemishes or anything like that to correct. And I'm just blending it out. Okay, so now what's that? I don't know. So now I'm going to um, blend out my under eye concealer. I'm just dabbing that with my fingers. 
and then to make the under eye look lighter because right just now it's a little bit dark from this concealer you can see so to make it lighter I'm going to use the Max Pro Longwear Concealer and it's a lighter shade this is the NC20 as well I think yeah NC NW20 because this one has a little more of a pinky shade to conceal the under eye circles and I'm going to dab that under my eyes So now I'm going to set it with the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder and the Sigma F35 brush. And I'm only going to set my under eyes. And before I set the rest of my face, I'm going to contour my nose a little bit, like you know I like to do with any makeup look. I'm going to take my um, Anastasia Contour Cream Kit and this uh, flat foundation brush. I'm going to take the darkest color right here and just lightly go on the sides of my nose to shape it a little bit and make it look thinner then I'm going to set my face with the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless Powder I'm in shade um, 110 Porcelain and I'm going to take my F20 um, Powder Blush by Sigma I'm just going to apply that to the rest of my face to set everything and just make everything look even. And then to um, set my nose contour and intensify it just a little bit, I'm going to take the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Contour Kit in the shade Light and I'm going to take this darker part on a blending uh, brush. This is E35 by Sigma. And I'm just going to go over my nose contour to intensify it and set it a little bit. It's gonna look um, a little bit too dark now, but everything just comes together at the end. I'm going to take the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Bronzer to round up my face just a little bit and warm it up with the Sigma F23 brush. And I'm just going to take a little bit under my cheekbones, a little bit on the sides of my forehead, and on the hairline. like that and then just taking a little bit down my neck okay so for blush I'm going to use a nude colored blush because back in the 80s they used to wear uh, more like brownie like peachy tone blushes so I'm using the NARS blush in Madly I'm going to take the um, F40 yeah F40 blush brush and I'm going to apply that to my cheeks and also they kept the blush pretty far out right here they didn't put it like in the center of the cheeks but they kept it right here on the outer corner of the face and pretty low down so a little bit under the cheekbones like that Now I can't remember that I've seen any like highlight or anything like that. Um, I think this trend is something that came up more nowadays, but back in the 90s the face was pretty matte, so I'm not going to apply any highlight today. Um, yeah, I'm just going to fill in my brows. Now um, first I'm just going to brush them with the spoolie. And back in the 90s they've had either, it was all about either really really thin invisible brows um, like two strokes like that, my mom had them. Um, my mom has thin brows till this day because that's just the shape of her eyebrows. But, but back then it was really um, trendy to wear really thin brows or really bushy, big bold brows. So it was either or. And my eyebrows are kind of in the middle, kind of in between and I don't want to make them look bushy or fill them in too much because it's just going to look unnatural I think. Let's try. Yeah, no, it's just gonna look weird, like nothing. So I'm just going to fill them in a little bit with the Anastasia de Brow Pomade, I mean the shade Dark Brown. But I'm going to try and keep them as thin as possible, although they're not thin. But, you know, I'm just going to fill in little sparse areas without making them look like wider or bigger than they are. 
Now I'm going to set my eyebrows with the Anastasia Clear Brow Gel just to keep them in place. And back in the 90s they had this trend to um, intensify and exaggerate like any moles on the face or any like beauty marks. So I'm just going to do just that. I have three that I really like on my face that when I apply concealer and powders and stuff that they're not showing as much. So I'm just going to bring them back and emphasize them with the same Deep Brow Pame by Anastasia. And I'm going to take a small um, eyeliner brush, I believe this is the 210 or 209 by MAC. I'm going to take just a little bit and intensify those beauty marks. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the eyes, so let me just zoom you in a little. So in the 90s they had two different versions, they wore either this type of a like light lid and darker crease all the way to the inner corner um, and a black, thin, pretty thin black liner but with a really small wing on the outer edge. So this one is the same, so um, yeah, this type of makeup which is what I went for, or a something like that, which is a pretty smoky eye, but they kept it only on the lid and on the outer corner, so they smoked out the lid itself and not so much the crease. But um, I went for this type of makeup look today, so that's what I have on my eyes, and that's what we're going to do. So, I'm going to start with primer. I'm going to use the Lorac Behind the Scenes eyeshadow primer. I'm going to apply that with my finger all over the lid. Then I'm going to start with the crease and I wanted to use kind of a burnt um, reddish brown color. So I'm going to use the um, Super Shock Shadow by Colourpop in the color Melrose and with a pretty precise crease brush, this is the E45 brush by Sigma, I'm going to take a little bit of that color and apply it to my crease. I'm going to take the color all the way to the very inner corner of the eye right here and kind of meet this inner corner and on the outer edge as well. And I'm not going to sweep it outwards like and do like a cat eye like I usually would. I'm just going to keep it pretty rounded on this outer corner and taking it a little bit further down up like that. And this is going to be the base. And now to make it a little bit look a little bit smaller, I'm going to take a clean blending brush. This is E25 by Sigma and I'm going to just smudge out the outer corners of this color to just smooth it out a little bit. Now I'm going to darken the crease with that same brush but a darker brown shade. This is Brown by MAC and I'm going to take this into the crease and repeat the steps. Only this time I'm going to keep this color very close um, and pretty precise on the crease itself. I'm not going to blend it out as much outward as I did with the other color. So I'm going all the way in but keeping it in the crease like that. And then again going over this with a blending brush just to blend the colors together and make it look smoother. Then on my uh, lid I'm going to use a matte bone shade. This is Brulee by MAC. And with a flat E55 brush I'm going to take it to the base of the lashes and then kind of blend whatever's left on the brush upwards to meet the crease. I'm also going to take the same shade under my eyebrow and on the inner corners. Um, because the makeup there was pretty matte. So I'm doing that and then I'm going to move on to my bottom lash line. I'm going to repeat the steps that I did on the crease with a more precise brush. This is E20 by uh, Sigma. So I'm going to take Melrose first and you want to keep the colors pretty close to the lash line. Back then they didn't like smoked out the bottom lash line as much downwards as some people like to do today. So I'm keeping it pretty close to the lash line, I'm taking the Melrose shade, connecting it on this outer edge of the eye, and then I'm going to take Brun, which is that darker brown, and keep it even closer to the lash line with that same brush. Just darken the bottom lash line like this. Okay. So now I'm just going to move on to eyeliner, but I'm going to do it off camera because it needs to be pretty thin and it's kind of hard to match the liner without being this close to the mirror. So I'm just going to do my liner and I'm going to be right back. So I took it all the way to the inner corner, but I kept it pretty thin 
and I did the wing, uh, the wing pretty small on the outer corner. And I'm just going to curl my lashes and apply some mascara. I'm going to be using the L'Oreal Voluminous Original Mascara, and I'm going to apply um, a generous coat on my top lashes, and then a little less than usual on the bottom lashes. Um, I want to keep them pretty short, so I'm just going to apply the top coat and then when I move to bottom lashes, I'm going to keep the mascara pretty close to the roots. And if you mess up and um, you got mascara on your lid and you want to remove it without ruining your eye makeup, then I just uploaded a video on uh, last Saturday on my channel, so check it out uh, for a trick to remove mascara that you got on your lid without ruining your makeup. So moving on to lips. I'm going to first outline my lips with a darker shade and then go with a lighter brown tone kind of a shade in the center of my lips. So like fill in my lips with a little bit of a lighter color. So uh, for a lip liner I'm going to use the uh, color popular peep stick in Frickin' Frack and I'm going to outline my lips with that. I'm going to make the line a little bit thicker on the outer corners because they used to um, outline a little bit back then. Okay, so when I have that, I'm going to fill in my lips with the ColourPop Lippy Stick in Mosh Pit, which I'm not sure if it's avail available or if it was like a limited edition thing. If it is available, I'm going to link it down below. And um, this is kind of a cool toned brown, and I'm going to fill in my lips with that. So I think this color is a little bit too dark for me. I'm going to try to lighten it a little bit with the uh, ColourPop Lipstick in Choker by applying just a little bit. No, wait. First, let me blot the lips a little bit. Now I'm going to apply Choker in the center. I love the scent of lippy sticks so much. Did I just draw my nose? Oh. Okay, so that's a little bit better, and yeah, I think I'm done. So yeah, that's it for this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it and that you will try this look out. You can totally change the lip color, and then it will be totally wearable. Not that this is not wearable. Anyway, I love 90s makeup. I think this looks so cool. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up on the way out if you liked it and let me know in the comments below what you think about it, what makeup looks you like, if you want me to recreate maybe um, looks from different other er like um, years, if you want me to do like uh, 70s, 20s, 30s makeup, let me know in the comments below. And if I forgot to mention anything that I've used in this video, a list of all the products that I used is going to be down below in the description bar of this video as well as links to all the social media websites where you can find me at, make sure to follow me. Of course, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and click the little bell button to get notified every time I upload a video, which is twice a week, Tuesdays and Saturdays, and I'm going to talk to you all on Saturday. Bye. And before I set the red... And before I set the rest... Got a pain in my heart, got a love in my soul, easy come, but I think, easy go. On the outer corner, so...